Hey guys, this is Sneha from Webstack. So today we are going to learn basics of Node.js. What is Node.js? Why we use it and why it is so popular among the web developers. So let's get started. For starting the video, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to Webstack and hit the bell to get all the notifications. So let's talk about some interesting facts of Node.js. So one of the most important thing that you need to know is that it is created by Ryan Dell in 2009 at European JavaScript conference. So he is the creator of this beautiful technology. So Node.js is one of the most in demand technology of today's scenario. So if you see this bar graph of 2020, you can check this out that Node.js is the most popular one. And one of the important reason behind this popularity is its biggest community support. So there are a large number of developers of Node who are really active in all the forums in which you put your queries like Stack Overflow, GitHub and all these platforms. And also because of this popularity, you have good career and job prospects out here in Node.js. And also one of the main fact of Node is that it is using pure JavaScript. So that is one of the most important tool that Node.js uses. So before going into Node.js completely, I want to tell you some basics of website development. So let's check out what are the three core languages that we use for website development. So as you can see, we have HTML, CSS and JavaScript out here. So HTML basically stands uh, for your structure of your website, like whatever you see the static content or your structuring of that content is actually designed by HTML. The next part is CSS. CSS basically is used to design your website to make it beautiful. So whatever colors or designs you see on your website is all because of CSS. And the last but not the least, which is JavaScript. So JavaScript actually stands in between your HTML and CSS. So basically it provides the interactivity with the browser on your website. So it actually makes your website alive. So let's have a look on the examples on all of these three. So if we see this Amazon homepage, you can check out that there are beautiful data written out here. So all the data that you can see on this page, whatever is written is all HTML. And if you check out the designs, like you can see the divisions, all these small, small divisions and the arrow buttons. And if you see the sliders, this is all because of CSS. So let's have a look on JavaScript. So JavaScript is something which makes your website interactive. That means it focuses on the behavioral aspect of the website. So if you check out this example, it is just clicking the button and you are getting a pop up. So all those pop up and alert boxes that you get and also you can do the form validations uh, like you have email not found or invalid email address, invalid password. All these validations can be provided on this client side JavaScript as well. So JavaScript actually makes your website come to life. Also, JavaScript is used for creating games as well. So you can make some light browser games using JavaScript as well. So now to conclude JavaScript. So HTML actually controls the structure of your website. CSS controls the design part, which I have already told you. So all the look and feel of your website is actually CSS. And last, JavaScript, it actually provides the dynamicity to your web page. So you can see that none of the websites today, they are static. So every website is actually dynamic and that is because of JavaScript. So now to conclude this JavaScript, I'll let you know some features that are there in this language. So it is an object oriented language and also we call it as client side language. So what do you mean by client side? We will look in a minute. So loosely typed language is actually meant that whenever you are creating any variables like you must have used some programming languages like C, C++, Java. So in that you actually 
declare the variable by using int, char or float something like that. But in JavaScript you don't need to write any variable data type in front of the variable while declaring it. So that is why it is called loosely typed. And also you can see it is case sensitive. I have already told you it makes the web page alive and one most important thing that you need to note is JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. So it's simply comparing a car with a carpet. So there is no similarity between these two. Now let's have some in-depth concept of JavaScript. Because before understanding Node.js which is entirely built on JavaScript, you must have to know some fundamentals like how this JavaScript actually execute on your browser. Right now we are making our website interactive and that's it. That is all the functionality of JavaScript that we are learning right now. So in the browser, we have something called JavaScript engine. So this JavaScript engine is something which actually takes my JavaScript code and it interprets it. So if you check out for all the web browsers like in Edge you have Chakra. So every web browser is having a different JavaScript engine. So if you check Firefox we have Spider Monkey and for this Chrome we have V8. So JavaScript will actually be given to your browser engines and actually it is compiled in a machine language because JavaScript is a high level language and your system doesn't understand this high level language. So it has to be converted into zeros and ones that we call it as machine level language. Now let's check out what actually is Node.js. So we have already seen V8 engine is used inside Chrome and this is the most powerful JavaScript engine that we have thanks to the Google developers. So with such a powerful JavaScript engine, we can execute JavaScript code and it gets compiled very fast. So V8 is the fastest engine of all. So because of this feature, Ryan Dahl decided to embed this V8 inside a C++ code. That code now is called as Node.js. With the help of this Node.js, now we can execute our JavaScript outside the browser. Now it's not only limited to the uh, browser like we were using it for interacting with the user with pop-ups, zoom and the validations part on the browser side. Now it's being uh, given more functionalities because it is moved outside the browser. So Node.js is neither a framework nor a language, it is actually called a JavaScript runtime. So runtime is nothing but any environment that is provided to a program so that it can execute. So similarly, Node.js provides a platform or you can say an environment to our JavaScript code, which was earlier meant for the browsers to run it outside the browser as well, like on the servers we can say. So JavaScript can be executed on the servers now with the help of Node.js. And it is also known as open source and cross-platform. And apart from that, it is also very much scalable. Now let's check what do we mean actually by running on the server. So as a client, we can access the browser where we will put some request for the page, let's say mystore.com. So when I put the request for that page, it will actually go to the server and the server will process that request. It will be converted into some IP address with the help of DNS. And after that, we have Node.js sitting on that server now. So now JavaScript is not limited to browser. It has gone to the server. So in the server side, it will actually be able to access the file system, databases, and a lot more which is not possible with the browser side JavaScript because of some security issues. So actually Node.js adds some additional features to this V8 engine which is also written in C++. So now with the help of that C++ language, we got the power to access the operating system. And now you can get inside the operating system and your file systems in your machine. And then after finding the page for that URL, it will actually give the response to the user 
in the form of a web page uh, which may use HTML, CSS and client side JavaScript as well. But it may give the data in the form of JSON which actually stands for JavaScript object notation and a client cannot directly access your server because the server is quite protected so he has to access only through the browser. So let's check what this Node.js do on the server side. So let's check the role of Node.js on the server side. So Node.js is actually doing the database services like it can do all operations, insert, update, delete, uh, create a database, all sort of that things can be done in, with the help of Node.js and also it handles the request and responses whatever request user gives it has to send the response accordingly so that can be dealt with node.js and also it will help in data validations because the client side javascript validations can be snooped so any developer can access your code and put their code inside it so that is why it is recommended that you should have server side validations as well because it is not possible for the client to reach on to the server he cannot easily crack into our servers. So handles business logic and business rules. So what do you mean by that? So any company can provide their own custom rules to you as a developer. So you need to design those rules into your programming language which you are using. So let's say for example, Amazon is providing a sale exclusively for their prime members. So they need to verify who all users are their primary members. So they need to design their application accordingly. This is called business logics or business rules. And also I want to make a point here that Node.js is just not limited to the server. It is also more than that. We can also create utility scripts and build tools that can be used in other frameworks as well. But why we need it? There are huge amount of third party packages that are provided. Like we have FS module, buffer module, we have query string, path and so on. So the main feature of Node.js is that it is single threaded. Unlike your Java language which is having multiple threads. So Node.js only works with single thread. And that is why it is really fast and popular. And also it is event driven. Event driven simply means that whenever you click something, you hover over something, everything you do on your website is actually event in Node.js. So it also provides the asynchronous APIs. So that is the most important thing in your Node.js. And also if we talk, it is really fast because it is asynchronous. Now let's see who actually uses Node.js. So Node.js is being used by the giant companies like we have PayPal, Uber, LinkedIn, eBay, Netflix and Walmart and many more. So all of these companies are actually shifting towards Node.js. So now where we can actually use Node.js, what are the applications of it? So we can use it in browser side games as I have already told you and we can use it in streaming applications which is really helpful in Node. So whenever there is data intensive work like a lot of IO is involved, so you should be using node there. So in live streaming, you have to take the data, you have to give the data to the user. So a lot of IO is being involved. So in that application, node.js performs efficiently well. Time chat applications you can create out of this node because it provides some uh, sockets modules to create these chat applications. Also, we can create single page applications using Node.js. So let's talk about some of the cons or you can say Node.js gray area. It does not work very well with heavy computation task. So whenever a lot of processing is required, a lot of calculations are required. So in that case, Node.js doesn't perform really well. And also we get inside the callback hell. So with the help of this asynchronous programming, we will be writing the callbacks. You can simply assume this callback as a function that we call. So there are all lots of nested callbacks we are having and that is actually called callback hell. So it doesn't work really well with relational databases, but it works quite uh, efficiently with your NoSQL databases like we have MongoDB. And also, as I have talked about, we have a lot of APIs inside Node. 
So every now and then the APIs will get some updates and changes or fixes because this is a dynamic language this will sometimes create problems for you because you always need to update your APIs. So is there any alternative to Node.js? Yes, of course, we have different server side languages like Python, Ruby on Rails, we have .NET as well as PHP. So all these languages can be used in your server side. Then why Node.js? You might be having this question in your mind. So let me answer that. So you are using browser side JavaScript actually for interacting. You are for making your front end and also the same language you can use on server side. Isn't that beautiful? because you don't need to learn entire new language for server side coding. So that is why this is really popular and you can say this is one language for all. That's it for the basics of Node.js guys. I hope you find it useful and you got the basic introduction of Node.js technology. So thank you so much.